Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. I am so excited for this vlog today. Obviously, if you read the title, you know this is going to be my Hannah Montana readathon vlog. I am ecstatic to be hosting this readathon with some of my best bookish friends, and it starts today. So I'm so ready to get into it. So let me sit y'all down and just tell you what I'm reading. I will link my TBR below if you haven't seen that. But the book that I'm most excited to start out with is Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. This is going to do two prompts for me. I'm going to black out the board because obviously. <laughs> so this is going to be for two prompts uh, from a dual perspective, obviously, and for strong friendships, which is the prompt for my favorite Hannah Montana a song true friend so I'm super excited to get into this if you don't know what it's about basically these are half sisters uh, this girl lives in New York and this girl lives in the Dominican Republic they share a father but they do not know about each other until their father dies in a plane crash and they find out this man was living a double life and they had a sister that they didn't know about so it's about them reconnecting and kind of reconciling that it is written in verse, so I think it's gonna be really beautifully written and also just really quick to get through. I will probably start reading this on our first round of sprints tonight, so I hope you guys are gonna join us <laughs> and it'll be a fun time. But before that, I'm just gonna go on with my day. I think we're gonna go out to brunch and just have a little day. It's Sunday, so we have to do some errands, go grocery shopping, things like that. Um, so I probably won't get a chance to read until later, but I will definitely update you during the sprints and it's gonna be a fun time. Yay, day one, let's go. so obviously it is a lot later we are about to start our reading sprints so i hope you're going to have a fun time with us if you're one of the people who is planning on joining the live i'm about to start my first book clap when you land Literally after only two sprints, I'm a quarter way through this book because I'm just absolutely tearing through it. It is so good. The writing is so beautiful. I've been saying this in the live, but there are just some books and some authors where you read 20, 30 pages and you already know that you love their writing style. I want to read everything Elizabeth Acevedo has ever written. I have fallen in love with how this is written in verse. I didn't know how I would feel about that, but I absolutely love it. It just makes everything beautiful. Even sad things, uh -huh, like why am I about to cry? <laughs> um, the sisters haven't found out about each other yet, and I'm like anticipating that happening. I'm so excited for when that happens, oh my God but they're both dealing with things um, right now on their own and it's interesting to see the ways that they're similar and also the ways that they're different the different struggles that they have going on in their lives <sighs> and also I think like the moms might have known about each other and just the only people that were in the dark were the sisters but I don't really know I, why is this creating like so much suspense but then it's also just like I don't even care about the story I just want to read the words because they're so beautiful but also like I'm kind of reading just for the characters because I'm like in love with the characters our two perspectives are like I don't like one more than the other at all I love them both I am so excited that I love this book so much and I think my first read of the Hannah Montana readathon is going to be five stars ah! <laughs> This is what you're missing out on if you are not in the lives. So make sure you join them, even though this is happening in the past. So I hope if you are here, 
that you're having fun. Welcome to 2008. Oh my God, look, if you can see yourself in the chat, there you are. Wow, you made an appearance in my vlog. Wow, I love that for you. <laughs> okay guys, hello. I am almost at the halfway point. We are still live and playing Hannah Montana games and having a good little time. But I just wanted to say that this book does tackle a lot of things. Um, such as sexual assault, but a minor doesn't really understand what's going on, and a lot of heavy things, so I would encourage you to look up trigger warnings before reading this. I did not know that before I started reading this, so I just wanted to recommend that. Um, and you should always do that before you read a book. Just I know there are websites that tell you trigger warnings, so I'll link one of those down below. Um, but I think this book is handling it in a really real way, where the father can be celebrated as, you know, a good dad, but also his flaws are abundant and those can be pointed out as well. And I think that's really healthy and something that people realize as they get older that their parents are not they're superheroes, they're human, just like you and me. And I just really like that theme. Um, obviously, the father, not not one of his flaws was not sexual assault. I, I feel like I was going on two different thoughts and that came out totally wrong. I would never excuse someone a sexual assault and call that a flaw. <laughs> that, those are two separate issues. The mixed bag, um, parents can be people too is separate from the trigger warning sexual assault uh, issue. So two different thoughts. They're kind of jumbled in my head right now because I'm just trying to take in this story. It is heartbreaking and wonderful. So I highly recommend this book and I'm having so much fun on the live talking about it and seeing how everyone else's readathon is going. So I will update you a little bit later. I don't know if I'll do another update during the live because it is getting pretty late, but I will definitely read more tonight and probably update you in the morning. Hello, good morning. It is day two of the Hannah Montana readathon. We are on the floor and I'm ready to give you thoughts on clap when you land. So, I mean, y'all already probably could guess that I gave this book five stars. I would give it five stars simply for the gorgeousness that is this book. Okay, it's falling apart in my hands, good. But the ending and the meeting between the two sisters was more than I could ever imagine. The way that Elizabeth Acevedo can portray a mix of feelings like bittersweetness and things like that um the loss of losing a father but the gain of a sister and how there are such mixed emotions and ambivalence and things that go along with that it was so beautifully done and I mean, I cried at the end. I was finishing up this book this morning and I was just like laying in bed sobbing as I read the last few chapters because it's amazing. The way that these two girls meet each other and are immediately there for each other, ride or die no matter what, no matter what they think of the other girl and the preconceived notions they might have of where she comes from or if their dad treated her better, loved her more, whatever. It just speaks to love and loss and it was gorgeous. I cannot wait to read more by Elizabeth Acevedo. I love how she writes in verse. I wanna read more in verse. <laughs> if you have any recommendations for me, leave those down below. Um, I also just really connected with this because if you don't know, I am a therapist and right now I'm running grief counseling groups for bereaved kids and I don't want to get emotional, but this book just reminds me so much of some of my kids in those groups. And I just want to recommend this book to all of those little kids. Ah, I'm going to cry. It's fine. I love this book so much. 
So now I have two out of the nine prompts already knocked out, and that is dual perspectives and strong friendships. So check, check for best of both worlds and true friend. Next up, I'm taking on the prompts for Rockstar and She's Got Nerve, which are to read a thriller and a five-star prediction. I am going to read I Let You Go by Claire McIntosh for these prompts. I'm going to start it today and I'm so excited because I see all my friends on Goodreads rating this five stars, so I predict that I will too. Um, I just watched Caroline Johnson's reading wrap up for October, September, maybe a com combination of those months, I don't really remember, but she was raving about this book and gave it five stars. I'm so excited for this book. I kind of don't want to read the back because I want to go in blind, but I'll give you a little bit of a taste of a synopsis. So it looks like we're getting two perspectives, one from a mother who lost her child, why do I just love reading about themes of grief? I don't know, maybe because I am in the field of grief, so it's just very interesting to me and I see it every day. Um, interesting that I choose to pick it up in my free time as well. I don't know what that's about. Y'all can psychoanalyze me in the comments if you want. <laughs> so it's a bereaved mother who basically watched her child get hit by a car and pass away. And we're following her perspective as she tries to recover from that. And also we get the perspectives of the investigators that are they're trying to uncover the motives or I guess just investigate what happened during this hit and run accident where this little boy was killed. So apparently the twist in this book is absolutely crazy and insane and I won't be able to predict it. Y'all know I love books like that. I feel like this is gonna be a Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough kind of moment. <laughs> if y'all remember that spoiler vlog that I did, I will link it down below if you haven't seen it. My reaction to that, I literally was just sitting there for probably 10 minutes after I read the book like, what just, what just happened? happened? Davinci, like, <laughs> I feel like that's gonna happen with this one. I hope we get another five star. Can you imagine? Two five stars in a row to kick off the Hannah Montana readathon. That would be phenomenal. I'm so excited to get to this. I don't know when I'm going to get to this book because I have interviews actually for internship placements for hours. I have to get hours if I wanna be fully licensed as a therapist and I have to get those through an internship. So I have interviews for a site placement today, which I am kind of nervous for, but I am so excited to be starting that. So I have to do that and I have to do some other assignments for school. And then hopefully I will get to read this book because I honestly, all I wanna do is read this book, but you know, life. You gotta do life, you know? So I will update you guys at some point. I don't know what kind of footage you're gonna get today. Honestly, this week is really, really busy. This is probably one of the worst weeks we could have chosen to do a readathon. But this is life, so let's go for it. Oh my God, there's a piece of fuzz in my hair. How long has that been there? Y'all didn't even tell me how rude. Hey guys, obviously it's the next morning. We're up bright and early because um, I have a lot of things to do today and I still want to get in my gym time. So that's where I'm about to go. But before I go to the gym, I thought I would just update you on I Let You Go. I'm just gonna stand in my kitchen to do this because I have puppies sleeping in the other room and I really don't want to sit on the floor. I want to like, be up and moving so I don't have to warm up for as long. Can you tell I have a busy day? Um, okay, last night I actually got halfway through I Let You Go already. I cannot believe, like I, I already read 190 pages of this book in one day. That's not happening for me recently where I just speed through a book in one day because I love it so much, so. If we can finish this in two days, that's how you know. It's a thriller that really sucked me in. Um, but basically, <laughs> I didn't I didn't think that was gonna happen. The first like 75 pages of this were really, really slow and really hard to get through. Like after the first chapter when all the action is like set up, after that I was kind of 
considering DNFing it. I can't lie. But then I was like, okay, I gotta power through. So many people have loved this book. I gotta see what the hype's about. At around page 7580, things start getting a little quicker. The pace picks up and I feel like I just got more interested in the story the more that I got attached to the characters. I think the character relationships and getting to know the characters was just happening really slowly. But now that I am attached to the characters, I'm really enjoying this book. And I got to part two. Oh my God. Let me see what page part two is on. So when I hit page 162, we got to part two. And there was like, at the end of part one, that was when it started to really pick up and I was really into it. So when it hit part two, I was like, okay, what's happening? Like, I just was getting into it and now we're getting another part. Like, I don't understand. Flipped the page. The first chapter of part two blew my mind. It's exactly what I was looking for. I even said in the live show when we were doing sprints on the first day of this readathon, <laughs> I was like, can anyone uh, recommend me thrillers with a second person POV? Like, I need to read something like You by Caroline Kepnes or Our Kind of Cruelty. Like, something like that that has a you second person perspective. I love thrillers like that. I love feeling like we are inside a deranged person's head. I just love those type of thrillers. And the first chapter of part two of this book was in the second person. I was loving it. It felt like I was reading you all over again and I absolutely love that book. Um, this definitely has a different vibe <laughs> than Joe Goldberg. Joe Goldberg is his own man and no one can ever recreate that character in my opinion. So this is not, I'm not saying that this is Joe. It's not even like a stalker moment, I feel. It's like, um, creepy man, I don't know your motives or even who you are <laughs> moment. So that's a new interesting perspective that I'm trying to figure out how it fits in. And yeah, also in part two, we find out that one of our perspectives that we were following in part one is not who we thought they were. And I love that in a thriller where it's like, you're reading this whole time with all these preconceived ideas. And then you find out, no, that was actually this person. And I don't think that's a spoiler for this book because you don't know which perspective I'm talking about. There are multiple and obviously I'm not saying who the person actually is. So I think you can read this book totally fine knowing that. And if you like those type of perspective switches in thrillers, which I love, then I think you will really like this book. The mystery is getting really interesting. I'm really attached to our main character. Oh, I just want to put a quick disclaimer in here. There is cheating in this book, and I know some people don't like thrillers that feature like relationships with cheating, and that's like a very common thing in domestic thrillers. Um, I wouldn't call this necessarily a domestic thriller. I would call it like a crime slash detective thriller because there is a pretty strong police perspective. Um, but there is random cheating going on in this book that I don't feel adds to the plot in any way. And it honestly annoyed me and I don't mind cheating at all. Sometimes I think the toxicity is a bit fun. Um, if that annoys you, I would not pick this up because it doesn't really annoy me. And even it, in this book, it, did kind of annoy me so I don't know how I'm gonna feel uh, about this book I think I'm just gonna have to keep reading and um, I don't know I mean factoring in the fact that the first like 80 pages were pretty boring and the weird cheating like right now I'm sitting at like a 3.54 the ending if it's super amazing I could give it a 4.5 maybe a 5 if it's that amazing but if I fall back into another slump reading this where it just feels boring this could even go down to a two star i have no idea this book is chaotic i've been talking for seven minutes i'm gonna go to the gym goodbye i'm obsessed with the cover it's basically about the college basketball player and he
Hey guys, it is obviously election night right now and it's just really discouraging, you know, to see someone who has made openly horrible, racist, sexist comments and, you know, is pretty much a confirmed rapist um, to be gathering millions of votes. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself a free pass tonight if I don't read because I need to just take care of myself. And um, if not reading is the way to do that, then that's what I'm going to do. I just, I can't believe the state of our country right now. Hopefully things turn around. But I thought that way in 2016 and it didn't happen. So I'm trying not to be too optimistic and get my hopes up. Maybe I'll try to read a little bit to escape this situation and try to calm down a little bit. But right now I don't see that happening. So if I don't read tonight, I'm sorry. <laughs> but also I'm not because I need to do that for self care. So I will update you with what I have read or what I haven't read tomorrow. <laughs> okay, um, it is the next morning. Sorry if this is like a not peppy vlog. I just, it's a hard time right now and I'm disappointed in the country that I live in. Um, obviously we don't know who's won the election yet. It was pretty rough last night. I'm just, I'm just disappointed and angry, honestly, that so many people, that this is even a close race. It, it blows my mind. But that is not what this vlog is about. It is unfortunate that this week this is happening because this is the Hannah Montana readathon. It's supposed to be fun and light and full of escapism. And that's what I need right now. So I'm going to try to <laughs> focus on that and tell you a little bit about this book because I did end up reading a little bit more last night. I probably read, how much did I read? I have a little under 100 pages left. So I probably read about 100 pages last night and this is really picking up guys. It is getting really good. The more that I'm reading, the more it is like reminding me of You by Caroline Kepnes, a little bit of Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris, which you guys know is one of my favorite thrillers of all time. So if this one has a huge twist, which I've heard that it does and has been hyped for its twist, I don't know, this could be either really good or really bad, depending on how I like the twist. But so far, I'm really enjoying it. And it actually is helping a lot with the escapism I'm needing right now. Like, all I wanna do is lay down and read this book. Um, but I can't do that, I have to do life. Which is unfortunate that life does not stop when we have, you know, crises going on in our country. But hey, that's how it is and um, if we don't all do something and work to change it and vote and use the privilege that we have to speak for other people, then it's not gonna change. Uh, I can rant about that. I'm not going to. I'm just going to let you know that I'm almost done with this book. I really like it and I'll probably finish it later and have another update for you soon. Hello guys, update. I just got off of the weirdest phone call of my entire life. Um, and I finished this book. So I'm having a very weird day. It's election time. I just got, you know, the most strange phone call I've ever received. Um, and I finished this. So let's just talk about this. <laughs> um, I'm giving this book four stars. The twists were immaculate. The second, like the last two thirds of the book were phenomenal, riveting, thrilling, everything that I wanted, honey. But I really cannot forgive that first like third where it was so boring and hard to get through and the random cheating that I was talking about it there was literally no point to it whatsoever so that was really annoying didn't really add to the ending at all um if that wasn't in there maybe I would have given this a five star but it was in there and I don't think it made any sense. So I gave it a four out of five stars, but it is a really strong thriller and I recommend it if you like things like behind closed doors. Um, it 
did have some pretty intense scenes um, like in Behind Closed Doors, um, almost like some scenes in Pretty Girls. So if that's too intense for you, maybe stay away from this, but y'all know that I like intense thrillers, so I really liked this one. And I think my next read, I'm going to hop over to What You Wish For by Catherine Center, which is a romance about a school librarian and a teacher. So I think that's gonna be really cute and hopefully lift my mood during this very, nerve-wracking time okay guys i will see you when i've read a little bit of what you wish for hey guys it is the next day sorry if this is such a like crazy disjointed like vlog i just am doing a lot of things that i can't actually show you in vlog footage i don't want to be the person that's like i'm working on a secret project but like i'm working on a secret project <laughs> uh, so a lot of the things that i'm doing are for that and i can't vlog it or i'm just doing school and that's boring so i'm not taking vlog footage of that so I'm sorry if this is just all bookish updates and no like fun little life pieces, but that's kind of what's going on in my life. Um, I did get halfway through What You Wish For last night, which I did not think I was going to read that much, but this is going really fast and it's really short. It's like 305 pages, so I'm on page 153 right now. I'm a little... wait... I'm like perfectly halfway. That's amazing. I am perfectly halfway through this book. I don't know if I um, told you this, but I'm reading this for two prompts for the readathon. The He Could Be the One romance prompt and the I Want to Know You underhyped book prompt. So I don't really know how I'm feeling about this so far. We're already halfway through and the romance has not been enough for me at all like this is definitely a slow burn romance so if you like that then maybe you like this um it's also kind of enemies to lovers but i feel like it's not going hard enough and um i like enemies to lovers but it has to be done well for me to really like it so those are my thoughts basically what is going on is we have this librarian that we are following and she used to work with this guy who is a teacher at her old school. She decided to change jobs because she had a huge crush on him and he had a girlfriend who he was probably going to marry and she just couldn't stand to be at that school and watch it happen. It was like making her depressed. So she ended up moving to Galveston Island, which if you don't know is like an hour away from where I grew up. So it's really cool to read about a place that I know and I've been to and like see things mentioned in the book that I have actually been to in real life. Um, so that part is cool but when she moves to Galveston she really blossoms into herself becomes a whole, whole new, woman, new woman doesn't, doesn't need, this, need man. this man well this man just so happens to get hired at the school that she's working at now so there's that and i bet you're asking me like how is this possibly enemies to lovers like she's been pining after him she literally was so in love with him that it hurt so much to even see him with another woman that she had to move across the country like why how is this possibly enemies to lovers well this man has been through some things and changed and now he's like the opposite of the man that he once was so she's kind of grappling with that the fact that he's so different but she still kind of has these feelings for him and at the same time she really disagrees with the policies that he's like trying to enforce at her school so yeah i don't really know how i feel i feel like this is like a three star right now there's a lot of like school politics conversations and not a lot of romance so we'll see if the romance picks up any more but maybe that's why this is underhyped because it's not going that well especially compared to Catherine center's other two books that i've read by her i really enjoyed them so Kind of disappointed that this is falling a little flat, but hopefully in my next update, I will like it a little bit more. 
the bag has been secured the bag has been secured okay so i got a fat box in the mail and this is definitely not books but let's um do an unboxing anyway okay so spoiler alert <laughs> i know what this is because i won an instagram giveaway which i literally never win um i enter so many never win them they're usually for like clothes, accessories, shoes, etc. The one I end up winning um, is pasta. I literally won pasta. So we're gonna unbox like a million servings of pasta right now. See what we got. Oh my God. We got garlic, lemon, peppers. We got more garlic lemon pepper we got spinach basil garlic and another spinach basil garlic get your head out of the box absolutely not we got zesty cajun linguine <laughs> we got cabernet sauvignon fettuccine hey this for you my dude we have chocolate dessert linguine what what and we have rosemary lemon pepper fettuccine. So now I have all this. I just have all this pasta. I don't know what to do. What do I do with all of this? We will be surviving on pasta for the remainder of our lives. Oh my God, it's heavy. Okay, so that's my unboxing. I don't have a reading update for you. But here's this. Hey, hey, we're sprinting. We are sprinting. What's up? I'm in bed. We're sprinting. We got the puppies over here. We got everything. It's the whole setup. Hello, guys. Update. We are still sprinting. It is one in the morning. I don't know how I've made it this far, but I just finished what you wish for by Catherine center and i'm gonna rate this a 3.5 out of 5 stars it didn't have the most substance okay i'll just say it but it made me happy and it was so cute and it had so many of those cute little romance tropes that i love it did get a lot more romance heavy in the second half and it had those like enemies to lovers vibes that i needed there were like screaming fights on the beach in the rain there was like an amusement park scene it was just giving me the vibes you know so i ended up really liking it and like having a lot of fun reading it but it's definitely not like one of my favorite romances i would definitely definitely recommend how to walk away by katherine center over this one but i still really enjoyed it and i think it's a fun time if you like like cheesy hallmark movies and you just want something fluffy i mean this is perfect for that i just smacked myself in the head with a book okay so that means i'm on to my last book for the hannah montana readathon and that is going to be the one by john mars so if you didn't know what this book is about it is kind of like a sci-fi dystopian thriller about if in the future we had this technology that could tell us through a DNA test who our perfect match was, like the one. So would we give up our current person to be with our the one? So I thought this book would be perfect to use for the gray morality in characters prompt for this readathon. So it's going to count for that and the last two prompts that I have to check off, which are recently hyped. I've seen this book all over booktube and if we were a movie because hello, she's getting made into a Netflix adaptation. Love that for her. So yeah, I'm super excited to start this thriller. It's one in the morning, so I probably won't start it tonight, but I will let you know when I do. Good night. Hello, I am on my way to the gym, but on my way out of my apartment, I think I have book mail. So I'm gonna go get the book mail and um, we can do a quick little unboxing. <laughs>
two that I got. This was my like November pick. Pretty Little Wife by Darby Kane. It's a debut thriller. Who knows, maybe she'll be a new fave. And then I got this for my romance vlog that will be going up in December. So that was fun. And now I'm gonna go kill myself at the gym. See you later. Hello vlog. I would say good morning, but it's actually almost evening. <laughs> I have not been doing much today, so I didn't really vlog, but I started the one and I cannot put it down. Like I picked it up, read 150 pages, and if I wasn't about to watch the next episode of Great British Baking Show, which I've been excited to watch, I would literally read all 500 pages of this book. It is unput downable like this is a thriller that will suck you in from page one i think i have a new favorite it's absolutely insane i didn't really think of like the possibilities of what can happen when you like find your match some people are finding out their match and they're dead some people are finding out their match is of another gender that they didn't think they were attracted to some people are getting matched with serial killers. Like, I didn't even think about the possibilities. This is amazing. This is so intriguing. And when it comes to Netflix, I'm literally gonna watch it so fast. So, I mean, I have a feeling this is gonna be five stars. Like, I would already rate it five stars. Like, if the book was just ended, like, where it just stopped reading, it would be five stars. Like, I don't even need to know what happens because it's just already so good. This book, I like a lot better than The Passengers by John Mars that I read earlier this year. So I would definitely recommend this one over that one, but I'm so excited to read more of John Mars' backlist. And that is the update for now. I will let you know when I read more. She's literally falling off the side of the couch. <laughs> you good? Are you good? Are you good? Hello, obviously it's much later, but I am only 100 pages away from finishing the one. This book is so good. Like there's been so many twists. I, I cannot remember the last time I've read a thriller with this many twists and I've only predicted one of them so far, literally one. And I was waiting for it and I feel like we were supposed to know and the anticipation was just building. And then when it was revealed, I was like, yes, I literally knew it. But every other twist has taken me by total surprise. The chapters are really, really short in this book. And there is a cliffhanger that keeps you flipping pages at the end of like every other chapter. So we're following five different people and like their journey, finding their matches and how it's going for them and the craziness that is ensuing. And it's like, it goes in a pattern. Like it's like one person, two person, three person, four person, five person. So you'll read like chapter number one person and then there'll be a cliffhanger and it makes you want to read through two, three, four, five to get the one. But in between then, you've already read a cliffhanger from two, three, four, or five that makes you want to read after that. So it's just like, you literally cannot put it down. It is so good. I'm simply obsessed with it. I can't remember the last time I flew through a thriller like this in one day. Like I started this book probably around like three o'clock and I haven't been like just straight reading. We like were eating and watching shows and just like hanging out and stuff, but it's 10 o'clock and I'm already almost done. So I'm like flying through this 500 page girl and I'm loving it. So I'm pretty confident this is gonna be a five star unless the ending is just absolutely horrible. I will let you know what I think when I finish it, probably in the morning, because do y'all really want another clip with this lighting? Also, look at me. No, it's gonna happen in the morning. Okay, goodbye. Hello guys, today is the last day of the Hannah Montana readathon. I'm gonna cry, but I actually finished my entire TBR that I planned on reading before today. I finished the one last night, you guys. This is a five star book. I cannot remember the last time I loved a thriller this much and absolutely flew through it. The end blew my mind. 
I don't think this is a very traditional thriller. Like it's not very like murder centric other than the fact that we are following one perspective that is a serial killer and seeing how they're dealing with getting matched and if they can actually fall in love, which I thought was interesting. But I think anyone would enjoy this book, especially if you like sci-fi, dystopian, black mirror kind of situations like that. So I highly recommend this book to anyone. This book was phenomenal. I flew through it in a day, it's 500 pages. Are you kidding me? And it was reading this like weird little copy. Like <laughs> it's like such a fat little chunk. Like I usually do not like reading these books. And so they take me longer to read like mass market paperbacks. But this, I was literally bending the book. I literally broke her 1 million times. Cause I'm just like, I need to get through this. I need to see what happens. Like this is the most page turning book I've probably ever read. So that was an easy five stars. And I'm so happy to have ended the readathon on something so great. Overall, I got two five star books, a four star book, and a three star book out of this readathon. And I'm really not mad about any of them. I really enjoyed my experience, especially doing the lives and the reading sprints with you guys. It was so fun. Thank you so much if you participated along with us. I really appreciate it. Let me know down below if you participated what you read, what your favorite books were, if you completed your TBR. I want to know everything. But thank you so much guys for just participating and watching the vlog and having fun in this Hannah Montana readathon. And yeah, don't forget to like this video if you liked hanging out with me and seeing my reading journey this week. And subscribe to my channel if you are not. And of course, subscribe to all my lovely co-hosts of this readathon. I love you guys so much and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Oh,